What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content that I'm uploading onto my channel, then feel free to subscribe, and you can also offer suggestions on topics and characters and storylines and whatnot that we can have discussions on uh, later on in this channel. Okay, so something that I thought would be kind of cool here would be to run over how Wolverine's healing factor works, right? Because I think that's one of the big questions people have going into the Logan movie. Why is Wolverine old? If Wolverine has a healing factor, then how can he age? Well, that kind of also begs the question of how did he get to the current age that he is right now? If he's had a healing factor the entire time, wouldn't he just stay a kid or whatever age he happened to be when his healing factor first kicked in? So I want to say that during Chris Claremont and Frank Miller's original Wolverine mini, uh, mini series, he I think it was uh, Chris Claremont and Frank Miller. Um, I believe they established the ratio with something like 15 to one or 10 to one or something like that. So for every 10 to 15 years that pass, Wolverine only shows the outward signs of aging by one year. So his aging is basically slowed down because of his healing factor. But the question is, how does that work? Like, how does that function? What's the whole deal here? Okay, so let's say that like you're shaving your face if you're a man or you're shaving your legs if you're a woman or you're shaving your legs if you're a man and you're shaving your face if you're a woman. I have no idea. <laughs> but let's say you're shaving and you cut yourself. What happens? Okay, it's a lot more complicated than I'm gonna make it out to be, but essentially what happens is this. The body's immune system kicks in, it clears out any bacteria that may be prevalent in the wound, the red blood cells kick in, they begin creating something called collagen, which is the baseline for the formation of new tissue. New tissue in turn begins to grow, it fills in the cut, and then skin grows over that cut. That's basically what happens. I mean, there's a lot more advanced, and I'm not a biology guy, so you know, but there's a lot more stuff that goes into that, but that's essentially what happens if you sustain a cut. Wolverine's healing factor does much the same thing. The difference is that within the realm of Marvel Comics, it basically heals it perfectly, where your body heals imperfectly. That is to say, you'll notice that if you cut yourself and you have a scar, it's because you basically have new skin growing over the old skin, but even then, it's imperfect. It's not perfect skin growing over your cut. With Wolverine, it's absolutely perfect skin because his healing factor just functions that way. Marvel doesn't really tell us why, they just say that it does. Now, the idea here is if that's the case, then are there ways to basically get around Wolverine's healing factor? The answer to that question is yes. There are three main ways to do it. Uh, the first way is to slow it down, the second way is to turn it off, or the third way is to get rid of it, which is how he died in the first place. But with regards to slowing his healing factor down, this comes by way of something called carbonadium. Carbonadium is basically a poor man's adamantium. That's exactly what it is. When the United States metallurgist Myron McLean accidentally created uh, adamantium, Russia responded by trying to create their own. The issue is they couldn't create adamantium perfectly, and so because of this, uh, they ended up creating something called carbonadium. Carbonadium is just like a radioactive metal that slows down healing factors. It was just designed to be introduced as a way to sort of add this uh, this ability to, to neutralize Wolverine or to slow him down or create a way to basically take him out, to introduce a new element to his stories that could basically see him potentially being defeated because up until that point, he was basically just this indestructible man. Now, the second way comes in the form of the Muramasa Blade and that basically turns the healing factor off temporarily. The Muramasa Blade was a sword that was created by a man named Muramasa specifically for Wolverine at the request of Wolverine. And the idea here was that in his earlier days, uh, Wolverine's wife, Itsu had been killed, and in response to this, he wanted to eliminate anybody that had anything to do with his wife's death. And so what he did is he went to a guy named Muramasa and said, craft me a sword that will do this. Muramasa took a portion of Wolverine's soul, put it inside the sword, and in response to this, anybody that's damaged with this sword itself will have their healing factor temporarily shut off for a temporary amount of time. And it doesn't matter who that person is. Anybody that can be penetrated by the sword will have their healing factor turned off. So at that point, all it really comes down to is can the sword penetrate their armor or something along those lines. Now, the idea here is that once the healing factor is turned off for a temporary amount of time, well then the issue is how do you kill Wolverine? Because keep in mind he has an adamantium skeleton, so you can't just take a knife and chop his head off. It doesn't work that way. There'll really be no way to decapitate Wolverine aside from some super high intensity laser designed specifically to cut through adamantium or someone who could basically, you know, take the adamantium off his skeleton like uh, like Magneto did, which would just result in Wolverine dying in the first place because his body wouldn't heal. But regardless of the circumstances, that's one of the ways to basically nullify his healing factor. The third way is to introduce a biological contaminant. And that's what happened in Wolverine Volume 5 in the story arc called Drowning Logan. It was a two-part story, and it was a prelude to the death of Wolverine. And what ended up happening is that in this story, Wolverine was infected with a uh, virus from a place called the Microverse, this basically miniature universe. For those of you guys who saw the movie Ant-Man, when he kept shrinking down at the very end of the movie, if he'd have kept going, he would have basically shrunk down to the Microverse. That's really what would have happened. This is an extremely small universe inside of the main Marvel Universe. But the idea here is that these 
these organisms, you know, this this biological germ basically existed or at least found itself within the main Marvel universe after escaping the microverse with a desire to basically take over all life, to basically, you know, begin uh, infesting various individuals and then take over existence as we knew it. Now, of course, when they infected Wolverine, the uh, organisms basically turned off his healing factor. They disabled it. Now, if those organisms were removed, his healing factor would have come back. But while they were there, uh, his healing factor was essentially gone. And the result of this is that uh, Wolverine ended up dying after being encased in adamantium. It led to a great big, huge story arc called The Death of Wolverine. It was a great big, huge lead up. The main story was only four issues long, but those are the ways to basically turn it off. Now, the question is this. Going back to our instance about how the body basically reacts to any kind of physical injury, the question remains, why does Wolverine get old? If those are the ways to turn off his healing factor, but we're not talking about using those, then how does he age? How does he get from, you know, being 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 years old? Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to introduce two characters named Professor X and Cyclops. You guys pretty much know who they are, but if you had never read a Marvel comic in your life, then there's a really good chance that you believe that when it comes to the character of Cyclops, that his eyes emit, you know, energy, that he's able to emit this concussive force that can slice mountains in half and knock people off their feet and make Cyclops look really, really cool. <laughs> That's actually not the case. In Marvel Comics, Cyclops' eyes are portals to a dimension composed of pure energy. And so as long as he has the ability to open and close his eyes, his powers will always be there. Those powers do not degrade over time. The same thing with Charles Xavier. In Marvel Comics, there's this idea when it comes to telepaths that somehow they communicate directly with each other, which they do to a degree, but it's not that simple. In Marvel, you have something called the astral plane. And the astral plane is like this metaphysical realm or whatever it is. But everybody who thinks, everybody who has beliefs, who has has dreams and nightmares and so on and so forth, those thoughts will radiate out into the uh, into the astral plane. And individuals who have telepathy basically have the ability to access that astral plane. So it would be like if you took all your thoughts that you had every day and you were to take your thought and just drop it off into a box. A person with, uh, with, with telepathy basically has the ability to go inside that box and to look at your thoughts. That's essentially what's happening when it comes to the astral plane, telepathy, and that kind of a thing. Now, people can do that in different ways. Some individuals are born with an X gene like Charles Xavier that allow them to. Other people like Doctor Strange have magic that allow them to. But regardless, they're all able to do the same thing. But again, so long as Charles Xavier is not in a vegetative state, that he has full faculties of his brain, he will always have telepathy. As long as his powers aren't taken away from him, the X gene's not shut down or something like that. Now, what this means is that the powers of Cyclops, the powers of uh, Charles Xavier, do not degrade over time. They don't get weaker. It's just those powers will always be there. Charles Xavier's ability to utilize those powers may decrease over time but his mind's ability to access the astral plane will always be there. That door will always be 100% open. Cyclops' abilities to use his optic blast may decrease over time in terms of how he chooses to use them or what the case may be, but his ability to open and close his eyes will always be there. With Wolverine, it's not that way. Because of the fact that his entire healing factor is rooted on the body's biological system in terms of how fast it responds to injuries, as he gets older, his healing factor will get slower. It's the same reason for why when you were eight years old and you cut yourself, your body would heal extremely fast. Whereas if you were 91 years old and you cut yourself, your body would heal slower. It's due to a multitude of different things. Skin elasticity, your skin gets thinner, it stretches out further. You know, your body's just older and so your systems begin to slow down a little bit more. You know, all those things kind of come together to make Wolverine older. Now, again, in terms of Marvel Comics with regards to, you know, how fast all this functions, because of the fact that his, uh, his aging is slowed down, it's the reason why it takes so much longer for his healing factor to slow down because he's literally aging at a slower rate, but it doesn't change the fact that a time will come when Wolverine will basically just die of natural causes if he wasn't killed artificially, simply because of the fact that he would reach an age a thousand years into the future where his healing factor would just burn out. He wouldn't be able to keep up with his body's degrading state, and he would basically just die. Uh, again, it creates kind of an interesting scenario with this character, but I want to go ahead and throw this video out there and, and kind of make sense of the reason why it is that Wolverine ages. It's simply because of the fact that unlike individuals like Xavier or individuals like Cyclops, whose uh, powers do not, you know, degrade over time, Wolverine's do. Wolverine's powers will degrade over time because they're based on his body's biological system. It's like Wolverine hitting a hammer. You know, from the time his healing factor first manifested up until the time when, you know, up until right now, he's just been hitting a hammer. But no matter how strong he is, no matter how much energy he has, a time will come when his arm will just begin to tire out. And then eventually his arm will just stop. That's how his healing factor works, is after a while, it'll just get slower and slower and slower until it's just not responding anymore. So with that being said, guys, if you guys have any questions, feel, feel, feel free to post down in the comments section. Also, please try to help me talk. <laughs> if you guys are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and yeah, I will catch you all later. Peace.